Hello, and welcome back to the How to Life podcast. You are listening to episode 21. I'm Dr. Laura Jagged, and today we are going to talk about the many facets of fitness. It's not just about looking good and looking like you are fit or in shape. So much comes into play that can either strengthen or diminish your overall fitness. And you may be surprised to find out what those factors are. I have a lot to share with you about this, as does my guest today, Andrew Takata. Andrew is the founder of HNL Movement, which is an online company that focuses on a multidimensional approach to elevating your performance, not only in sports and fitness, but in health and life as well. He has degrees in athletic training, strength and conditioning, and nutrition. And I have some experience with the human body also, so this is a really fun talk. I know I speak on behalf of Andrew and myself when I say we really want to show you that fitness is within reach for everyone. In fact, you are already most likely fit in many areas. You just didn't know it. Join in on this conversation and see just how close you are or can be. Hey, good morning, Andrew. Thank you so much for joining me today on the How to Life podcast. Good morning, Laura. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to talk to your audience and you are doing some awesome things. Keep up the great work. I appreciate that very, very much. This is going to be a fun topic because this is kind of my genre as well, since I've been a chiropractor for many, many years, most of my life. And today I want to talk about, and I'm going to quote something that you said, fitness is more than physical health and aesthetics. How do you sustain health and fitness? That's what I want to talk about today. And maybe we can start with some of the misconceptions about what being healthy is. It's not just, you know, looking good. Definitely. I think that, especially in modern world with everything that is at the touch of our fingertips, online, social media, we get this false sense of perception that fitness is just aesthetic. And when you look beyond that, there's so many other things that play into our sustainable nutritional habits, our mindset towards fitness and exercise, and also all of our experiences that either kind of promote fitness and health, or it's detrimental to fitness and health in certain ways. So what I mean by fitness is a lot more than just physical health is that there's a mental health component, there's a social health component, emotional health, of course, even what you do in your adult life, your schedule, your lifestyle, everything else that plays into your overall fitness and health. I think a lot of young people, when they think of health, think just physical health, what they look like. But I think a lot of the misconception is people don't realize what goes into looking like that. Yes, and, and food counts. Let's start with food. Food, yes. Yes, there is so many factors that you know, create that those outcomes, right? We all want the outcomes. But there's a lot of things what I talk about with food too, when I coach uh, clients on nutrition is that it's a lot of behaviors and habits that we form. So when we talk about food, yes, there is nutrients that your body needs, you need to do certain things. But not every everybody will do the same things, because it won't work specifically for them as an individual or in their lifestyle. So when we talk about food, Food is a whole different podcast episode, probably. But when we talk about food, it's really understanding that all of your perspectives, your past experiences, even what types of foods you like to eat, what social environment you grew up in, that all factors into some of the food and nutrition preferences that you develop. So when we talk about nutrition, it's, it's a lot more than just the food in front of us, the food that we're consuming. It's kind of everything that factors into who you are, what you're about, that will determine, okay, how does food factor into everything else that you're doing, including physical health and aesthetics? Your emotional health is often tied with the food choices that you make. And that is part of fitness as well. If you use food for comfort or to escape loneliness or to decrease stress, that is another aspect of fitness. It's important, I think, and what do you think, to take a look at what these triggers might be, what's going on in your life, and do you reach for food because of some sort of negative trigger? 
Yes, I'm, I'm glad you said that because emotional health and nutrition, they're really tied together. Um, you, can't have, you can't have one without the other. So when we talk about emotional health, it's kind of creating that awareness, awareness as to what you're doing, what your body is actually telling you, what you need versus what you want. And the good thing about nutrition, which hopefully this will hit home with some of your listeners, is that there's no perfect diet or perfect food or perfect meal plan. And that's kind of what the internet or social media tends to portray sometimes, is that everything needs to be perfect. But comfort foods and using food to help you feel better in a positive light, that's all part of nutrition. It doesn't always have to be negative where I'm feeling down in the dumps and I'm going to grab that carton of ice cream and finish it off. You know, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be in this good balance where food does help you to feel better. Food does bring you closer to your friends, to your family. And it doesn't always have to be the most nutritious food is something that I like to say. A lot of times we all have our favorite comfort food. It's not every week that you're eating these foods, but when you do enjoy it, you enjoy it for a multitude of reasons besides the nutritional content. And that's something that needs to be taken into consideration is your emotional health and that relationship to nutrition and food. Your relationship with food is very important and it's something to be aware of. What emotional state you're in, what mental state you're in determines how the food affects you. If you're happy, if you're social, and you're enjoying, I don't know, a plate of fries with your friends or an ice cream sundae or something, but you're at a good place and this food is your friend because you are with friends, your body's going to be able to process that better than if you get out a carton of ice cream and eat it, but you have guilt and self-loathing, then it's going to affect you poorly. Yes. I'm glad you said that too, because those are some of the connections that we don't realize because we don't, as you would say, we don't learn this when we're growing up. Even for me, it took 30 plus years for me to really dive into nutrition to gain a better understanding, which is what I enjoy sharing. And what you just said right there is that there's all of these indirect or cascading of effects that happen when you're under stress, when you're emotionally, you know, taxed, or when you're feeling depressed or anxious, it does affect the way that we process nutrients and the way that we actually utilize those nutrients in for different activities and how we actually either make it work better for us. And this is beyond physically, of course, but physical in the physical department too. And just understanding that if we can take away some of that stress or that negative relationship with food, that will help so much in so many different departments of our life. And that's really what we want to do with nutrition is trying to develop that healthy relationship with food so that you can enjoy things in the right balance. And going even deeper in that is having a better relationship with yourself, uh, a happiness. Your body really doesn't, the body doesn't really need us to help it out at all. It has the capacity and the ability to heal itself, to process food in the best way possible. It's us that gets in the way. So if we can, and it goes back to being happy, Andrew, if we can find happiness and contentedness and self-love and appreciation, our workouts are going to be better. We're, We're going to have fewer injuries or no injuries. Our food is going to serve us properly, no matter what we eat. We're going to sleep well. And life is going to be a lot more fun. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And a lot of times these basic habits that we're talking about in in this realm and with regard to nutrition, they can really be applied to any area of your life. Whatever you are striving to achieve, whatever your goals are in school, whatever you want to put your efforts towards in your career, right? All of these things, just finding happiness, finding that passion, taking care of yourself so that you can do so much more. That is something that needs to be stressed, I think, a lot more, especially in modern society. Let's talk about the athlete now. This principle applies to athletics, to competition as well. What have you noticed with your clients or people that you train who are competitors? How does their emotional health, their emotional fitness and mental fitness affect their physical performance? That's a... Interesting question. It's a very good question because like I mentioned before, 
the culture that you're around, and this is culture in your sport too, that has a big influence on our mental health, physical fitness, emotional health. And what I will say, the similarities first is that no matter what we're doing, we all go through similar stressors, similar negative emotions, similar things that we need to overcome adversities. But there's also differences between what your past experiences have led you to get to this point. So for a lot of the elite athletes, I mean, you know, we tend to put the elite athletes on pedestals, right? We think that they're inhuman, they're a level above everyone else, but really they're, they're just as human as everyone else. So with my professional athletes, it's the same conversations when they're, when they're struggling, when they're having a hard time during the season, when they're overcoming injuries, right? They have all of the emotions that we all tend to feel in different aspects of our life. So things like doubt, right? Or is this, is this ever going to improve? Or, you know, they start to feel depressed, like they can't help themselves. All of these types of things happen. It just might be in varying degrees from person to person, but everyone goes through the same things. Now it's how do you use all of your past experiences, I think, to respond in that situation or even react to that situation so that you can handle it as positively as possible instead of it having to be a major roadblock. And this is something that I see countless times with injuries because I deal with a lot of injured athletes trying to get them to perform back to their optimal level of performance. And I can't stress enough that we need to take into consideration everything that's going on in their life, where they are, even their life stage, right? And trying to connect with them in a way that you can help them in the way that they need to be helped at that moment. In my experience as a chiropractor, I took care of a lot of injured people. And I have 28 years experience. And so this is empirical evidence, not a hard study. But there was always an underlying emotional or mental stress that when you start speaking about it is what sort of lowered the defenses, lowered the body's physical ability and led to the injury. So I spent, especially in the latter years of my practice, convincing people that they're fine. This is not a debilitating injury. They will recover from it. The body can do it. And I think that that soothing, that redirection of thought to focus on where the root cause was helped in the recovery a lot. I can can reset the body, but they have to sustain it. And that is done mentally and emotionally. I would say emotionally more than anything. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And I like what you said right there too, because I think that's another misperception out there is any of the healthcare professions, uh, being a chiropractor, um, I'm my field of trade is being a certified athletic trainer. A lot of times we address or come up with solutions to the problem, but it does not end there. And that's what you just said is it's their job to learn about their body, understand what's going on, understand how to maintain and prevent other things from happening. And that's where it takes a lot of accountability and, you know, learning about what kinds of things they can do to help themselves so that they can sustain a healthy and happy lifestyle moving forward. Yes. My clientele were people who were very self-aware and they wanted to help themselves and they had a good, healthy mindset. So they responded much better because they took control. They, they owned it. They owned their, their recovery. And I just sort of facilitated that. But if you go in and you think, all right, I'm here, fix me. I already know we're not going to get anywhere because you're not going to take part in your healing as well. Yes. Just this education, like what you're sharing on this podcast will go a long way because it's having that perspective or, you know, kind of shifting your mindset a little bit to understand that only you can take care of your body. You can get all of the support and help around you. But if you're under that impression that I'm just going to do something and it's going to be a quick fix, which is not, I know that's not what you're about. That is definitely not what my company is about. Um, It's not saying that I don't want to help them, but the approach is going to be a little different. 
maybe they haven't actually learned how to listen to their body or take care of their body. So it's starting there and giving them some fundamentals to really understand, okay, these are things that you can do that will make a big difference or big impact on the quality of your life. And usually when people start to see the value in something, it could be with your overall health and fitness. It could be the value in education, value in, you know, even materialistic things, right? Once you see the value in it, then you start to realize, oh, there's a lot of things that I want to do to take better care of whatever that is in your life. So that's the conversation I think that is fun. You know, you get to really help people on that level and really start to teach them the necessary things that really going back to it, we should learn sometime growing up in elementary school, I think a lot of the times. What would you say to somebody who says, I want to get healthy. I look pretty good, but I don't feel good all the time. What can I do to start making positive changes that will benefit me in the long run? Yes, that is an excellent question. One of the basic things that I usually share with people I meet for the first time or just getting started is to take a look at what you're doing and really just ask yourself one simple question. Is it benefiting every aspect of your life? Not only physically, right, but mentally, emotionally, socially is a huge one. There are so many different ways to promote health, get exercise. And it's when you're ready for that at the right time or stage in your life that you start to be a little bit more aware as to what kinds of things will benefit you even further. And a lot of times when you add some of these new things in, that's really what gets your body to adapt further, gets you over that hump. And again, you'll probably feel more recharged to actually carry out all of the different tasks. If you are reluctant to work out or you think it's boring, I recommend you try different things and find something that is fun. I play a sport called pickleball. It is so fun. And I'll be out there for three hours not realizing that I am doing cardio and my body's getting stronger and my movement and flexibility has improved tremendously. I'm just having a blast. So whether it's walking on the beach or riding your bike or dancing, you don't have to go out there and and lift weights, although I recommend it. That's probably the best thing you can do for your body is to lift heavy stuff. But start with fun. And once you get used to it, you can start doing different things and you're going to do them better and it won't feel so daunting. Yes, you you have great points here. And that's one thing that we always need to find that fun or what drives us that passion. And for fitness, I think a lot of times we don't consider if it's not formal structured exercise, we don't consider that part of our fitness or our exercise when it actually that adds a lot of value to what we're doing. So you can have your structured exercise, right? Some of that is actually good to make sure that you're training for whatever activities you like to do. But your activities, that's probably what the end goal is. You want to be physically fit and reduce injuries for pickleball, right? For other people, it could be any other activities that they want to do, even if it's just their just doing yard work around the house, right? You want to maintain a level of fitness so that you can actually carry out the yard work and make that fun. It doesn't become fun when you start to get some of the injuries, some of the nailing ailments from yard work, right? Then you have to go back and take care of and address all of those things. So you want to try to be proactive and really do the things that take care of your body so that you can do all of the things that are fun. If anyone is older who's listening to this podcast, perhaps you think, oh, well, I'm getting older, so my body is slowing down and it doesn't move as well as it did. Your body can move as a 20-year-old if you keep it conditioned. And no matter how far gone you are, you can turn it around. I have seen it. I have seen people lose a tremendous amount of weight. I have seen people who had a debilitating back injury recover and are out running marathons now. It is 100% possible. Andrew, you've seen it too, right? Yes, I see that all the time. And I'm glad that you said that because with age, right, it's not one thing that is breaking down our body. So I know you have a lot of younger audience members. And when you're in high school, college, maybe the few years after college, you're pretty active still yet. Your body has this resiliency that you can recover quickly without doing all of the recovery strategies or, you know, paying so much attention to 
what kinds of things are having an effect on your body because your body just bounces back. Now, when you get older, I'm in an orthopedic based clinic. So I would say people probably in their 30s, 40s, right? That's usually when we start our families, we have a stressful career, we're not as active as what we were when we were in our early 20s. And then that provides a lot of detrimental effects especially when you try to do the things that you were doing back in your 20s. That is probably one of the most preventable things to prevent injuries is to actually make sure that you're, you have a good underlying base level to actually carry out whatever your sports or activities are. So for the younger demographic, keep up that consistency, keep your body active, take care of your body so that when you do things in your 30s and your 40s, even playing with your kids, you don't have to worry about potentially sustaining devastating injuries. It's not really the aging process that is getting to us. It's really the, the lack of consistency and what you've been doing over the past 5, 10, 20 years that really need to be addressed so that you can get back to your healthy lifestyle. Movement is the key. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Even if you're young, so young audience that's listening here, move your body appreciate how it moves now and remember it. You can sustain it as you get older. I know you're not even thinking about 10 years from now, but just move your body. Will you elaborate on movement? Yes. Movement is probably what I address or help people with the most. And the trend now, what I see over the past maybe 10 to 15 years, because technology is speeding up at a rapid pace, people are sitting more or we're not doing as many of the activities that we do outside is that I'm seeing a lot more restricted movement at a younger and younger age. And with the restricted movement, as you were alluding to, is that that opens up to more and different types of injuries in the younger population. So that's something that is very important is, you know, understand how to move your body, move your body in different ways, do different sports and activities growing up. Because all of that, it actually teaches our body what it needs to do to carry out certain different movements. And that's all part of just motor development. So just learning how to move your body, that needs to happen at a natural pace, just like how we're growing at a natural pace. So for everybody, all the younger listeners out there, is if you're not getting out of the position of sitting in a chair or standing up, right, you want to find fun ways through activities, through exercise that you can actually move your body, learn how to control different ranges of motion, learn how to fire your muscles so that you can actually feel that you're getting some strength to not only tolerate the demands of daily living, but do other things. It might lead you to find other types of activities that you really enjoy doing. Where's a good place to start? I think a good place to start is actually just PE. You know, and I know not everyone is going to have the interest in PE, but they have a lot of different activities that PE teachers are trying to incorporate. So my thing is just to keep an open mind. There's probably something that you are going to find that's fun. You don't have to necessarily be, you know, the star athlete in your PE class to actually find enjoyment in it. It's just finding fun under whatever your terms are. Because if you find it fun, those are things that you'll probably want to look into further or do more on a regular basis. And that promotes physical fitness and try to have a positive attitude when you actually do participate, because that is really what's helping you to take care of your body. Let yourself have fun. Yes, definitely. Let yourself have fun. That is, that is the one take home message of this episode. What advice could you give to the weekend warriors or someone who is not that physically fit and they want to do a really challenging hike, but they start feeling sick or injured or hurt, but yet they're with their friends and they want to keep going. Should they keep going or should they just be honest and say, listen, I need to take a break? There's no direct black and white answer to that. But I would say whatever you're doing for the weekend warrior, just build up gradually. If you're trying to keep up with your friend that's been doing this for years and years and is super conditioned, then again, try to communicate that with them. But also you need to do things that will progressively build you up to that level. 
a lot of times when we do sustain injuries, minor or major injuries, it's often just doing too much too quickly. And that is one thing that the body only can adapt so much in a short period of time. And that's the positive part. So if we start to do things progressively, your body will get stronger over time and you'll actually build your body up. But the other side of that is that if you do too much too quickly, it actually has a detrimental effect and it becomes counterproductive. You want to achieve this certain level or the certain goal, but if you do too much, then it actually starts to break your body down. You'll know when you start to break your body down because you'll start to recover slower. You'll start to have some nagging aches and pains. You'll start to suffer some injuries. And it has this downward spiral effect. And this is something that I like to share a lot because it's just showing them that, okay, if we address certain things, then everything will work better together. And you can actually make progress faster, which is what most people want to do. So just go slowly. Take your time with it. Understand what kinds of things you need to do to take care of your body, how to listen to your body, and know what is actual detrimental pain and what's just the process of getting stronger. And the only way that we can differentiate that is through experiences. So again, there's no quick fix to this. It's just you need to have those experiences. You need to understand what your body is telling you, and that will ultimately get you to where your friend is or get you to that next level. Self-awareness. Everybody comes to that uh, knowledge in a different way. But really, you have to listen to yourself. Do not ignore the warning signs. And also try to connect the dots with why you're doing certain things, why you're thinking certain things, what you're feeling. Going back to that example, let's say you're going to go on an intense hike that you know, okay, this might be a little bit above my level. See, where is what you're thinking? Is it your competitive nature? Were you a competitive athlete before? For other people, maybe it's just they really want to spend time with this group of friends because you don't get to see them as much. So there's different driving factors and forces to what is making you feel like you want to do certain tasks. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the social aspect of fitness since we talked about friends. Wherever you are, let's say you have a group of very fit friends and you want to be there with them, but you're behind a little bit. Those friends, when they see that you want to be where they are, are going to be really encouraging if you have a bunch of friends that are not a good influence on you and you decide that you want to get healthy, you may experience a little bit of pushback from them. They don't want to get healthy. They want to keep doing what they're doing. So you may find naturally that you're just going to kind of drift away because your interests have changed. And if you really, really want to make a change in a better direction, you have to stay focused because the uh, negative influence can be very distracting. And you might want to consider, do I want to keep hanging out with this? Is this good for where I want to go? What do you think about that? Definitely. That's so true. And one of the things I think is just looking down deep in you and seeing what you value the most. That usually tends to drive a lot of our behaviors, our decisions. And again, it's not saying not to be friends with people that, you know, are not helping you in that department, but you want to find what do you want to do in the future? Just understanding that your values will tend to drive what you want to do on a daily basis and what habits you want to create. So these are values more than just the superficial, like I want to lose weight. Or I want to look good for you know, summer and going to the beach, right? It's more ask yourself why. I think that will help you surround yourself with people that really support that, but it'll also make it easy for you to see what kinds of habits will work best for you. And these habits that you are developing with your health are going to apply to all areas of your life. Finances, personal relationships, your job. You're just laying down good habits. Yes. And there's no shortcut, like you said earlier, to good habits. It just takes time, practice. The only way that we really develop good habits is we need to string together consistent behaviors. And this might be something that will help some of your your listeners out there is that whatever you're trying to do, you just need to be consistent, keep doing the behaviors that are that are in line with what you want to achieve. Oftentimes, I think in today's society, especially with everything 
so readily available. We always are looking for the quick fix, right? So a lot of times we're just looking for the outcome that we want. But the outcome is something that I like to say all the time, we can't control the outcome. There's gonna be hurdles, there's gonna be obstacles, all of these different things. And we can't control what the outcome is, but we can control what types of things will potentially give us the best chance to reach that outcome, right? So when we talk about health and nutrition um, and fitness in general, is like, I use the example of the, of the weight on the scale. That is a perfect example of the outcome that we often want to achieve. But if you think about achieving that goal, it's all of the behaviors like, do I find fun in exercise? Am I eating the foods that actually make my body feel better? Am I in a good mental state to keep continuing? Um, do I have a support system around us? You know, does it work with my schedule? Those are all of the things that we do on a daily basis. Those are the behaviors that we can keep consistently doing. And before you know it, you'll get closer and closer to the outcome that you want instead of purely focusing on the weight on the scale, right? Um, weighing yourself every day and then trying to have that, that result or that objective data control or dictate what you're going to do that day instead of you actually focusing on the habits that's probably going to get you in that direction. It's true to just look at the step in front of you and ask yourself why. I love that you said that. Ask yourself why and just ask yourself questions. Is this good? Is this what I want to do? And don't look at the end goal because that is very daunting and that really can throw you off. I've talked about this before on other topics, but it's the same principles that are applying here across the board. Don't look too far into the future. Set your goal. Trust that you're going to get there and just look down one step at a time. And before you know it, you've made some good headway. Yes. The last thing that I want on that topic is find a professional that will really put you in the center of your goals and help you along the way. One of the things that I always mention is that the higher levels of athletics, the more that you're exposed to these types of resources, everything that we're talked about here. And really what I want to do, and that's my passion, is kind of getting all of those concepts, education, knowledge, and trying to give it or provide it to the general public. Because most of us, we don't experience this unless you have been around it. So that would be my recommendation is, you know, go find a healthcare professional or personal trainer or something that is going to understand this and really put you in the center of your journey and your plan. If you go to someone that has one way and you have to fit into it, I'm not saying they don't have good intentions, but that's not the only way to do it. So if someone ever tells you there's only this way to do it. And if you don't do it like this, you're going to fail. I would highly recommend to go look for other opinions, you know, and it's not saying that person doesn't care. It's just that there are so many ways to do it. And there's a better way for you to navigate your journey. That is very good advice. And this also kind of ties in with the learning to trust yourself. You can get advice from many people. In fact, I, you ask a person a question, five people, you'll get five different answers. But really, the only one that matters is yours. What's your answer to your own question? But And when you find your professional, when you find the person that gets you and allows you to lead your way, you'll also find your community who will support you in that as well. Definitely. And I can't encourage you know, everyone to explore that themselves, be accountable. You, you want to be in the driver's seat of your health and fitness and your overall journey. Perfectly said. Andrew, will you tell me a little bit about HNL movement? By the way, what does HNL stand for? So it's kind of a play on words. HNL is the airport code for Honolulu, Honolulu, Hawaii, where I'm from. But it's also, I made it stand for, I don't really say it, but health, nutrition, lifestyle, Love it. movement. It's a play on words, right? Movement as in like physical movement, but also a movement to educate people on the interconnectedness of health, nutrition, lifestyle, and movement. It's very clever. No, thank you. You know, health is not one thing. It is not linear. It encompasses so many aspects of our life. So don't get discouraged if you don't look like somebody on Instagram or you're not as strong as somebody else. Or if you are very strong and athletic, don't get discouraged that you've plateaued. We are always growing. We're always expanding. And we're always learning things that will enhance our lifestyles, like this interview. 
Andrew, thank you very, very much for joining me today. Uh, it was a wonderful topic. I really enjoyed it. And I think the audience is going to get a lot out of this. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. And I look forward to hearing the episodes and seeing all of the great things that you have in the future. Be well. Thanks so much. All of these areas of fitness can be achieved. It just starts with awareness and having fun. I think we made that pretty clear. Whenever anything is disguised as fun, the ride is going to be so much easier and, well, fun. Andrew has so much information on his website, hnlmovement.com. He also has a lot of really, really good videos on YouTube. You can check that out on his YouTube channel, HNL Movement. And you can also follow him on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. And I will have all that information in the show notes for this particular episode, howtolife.com slash 021. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast if you are enjoying these shows. And if you're getting some value, please leave a five-star rating and or a positive review. And if you've been waiting for Amazon Music to get into the podcast scene, they are in it now and this show is on it. So check it out there. I'll be back again next week with some more information to help you out and make life a little more easy. In the meantime, say hi to me on Instagram at How to Life Now and check out the How to Life Mominars on YouTube or you can send me an email to drlj at howtolife.com. Be well, everyone. Do well. Be kind to others, but especially be kind to yourself. And relax and have fun. Life is supposed to be fun. You got this.